We see a lot of movies getting given a 4K release these days, lots and lots, and a lot of them you have to question why. Why are you giving this movie a 4K release? It's not really necessary for it. I'm looking at things like a lot of the John Hughes projects. Do they need 4K releases? Things like Weird Science, National Lampoon's Vacation, etc. I don't really think so. They don't really fit into the realm of 4K. I mean, I couldn't, you know, I'm not going to laugh anymore while watching them. So that brings me to this video here. And I'm going to give you 13, 13 movies because it's Halloween, because it's October. I'm going to give you 13 movies that need a 4K treatment release as soon as possible um, before time runs out. So let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to this list, this list of movies that need or in desperate need of a 4K release. Now this is a personal list more than anything else and I am going to avoid the territory of those obvious ones that I can hear you shouting. The Abyss, Aliens, The Terminator, True Lies, etc, etc. Yes, we're getting Titanic very soon, which is fantastic news for those others. Hopefully they will come. So I'm going to avoid that territory and I'm going to give you 13 movies here right now. There's no particular order to this list, not like a ranking of how I want them, my least favourite to my favourite. Just as is 13 movies, 4K releases would be nice. Thank you very much. So let's get into it. So, number one. Yes, um, okay, number one is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest from 1975, the Jack Nicholson starring movie. That's right, yeah, we've just had a HMV um, e-cine edition released, which I got myself, and it begs the question, why no 4K? This is a fantastic film, it's a classic piece of cinema that should definitely be preserved. Um, and a 4K would just, you know, round it off nicely. It certainly would. A 4K for this, I would really appreciate because it is a classic movie. Um, next, 2006's Superman Returns. Okay, this isn't a film for everybody, but Warner Brothers have recently, not long ago, released that Superman steel tin box set with four movies in it. Just the first four Superman movies. Now, Superman, I know Superman Returns isn't Christopher Reeve, but it does fall as part of that chronology of movies. It fits in with those films. Um, aesthetically, um, the soundtrack, everything. You know, Superman Returns is a love letter to the Richard Donner Superman movies. And why it hasn't been done or hasn't been given one under this 100-year Warner Brother label that they're doing, you know, they're putting the top of all of their releases, is just, it, it, it's mind-blown time. I don't understand why. You know, that box set, 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 <laughs> what am I saying? That box set should have included Superman Returns, without a doubt. It feels lacking without it. It feels incomplete. That's right. And another series that is incomplete is the Rocky series. So now, 2007, Rocky Balboa. Yes, I know we got Rockies 1, 2, 3 and 4 on 4K, which was fabulous. I know of the rights issues, etc, etc, around Rocky 5 and Rocky 6. So those two films should deserve a 4K release as well if you've given the other four that treatment but more so than one is Rocky Balboa. Now Rocky Balboa is a fantastic movie. 
and it is a nice closure. It gives a nice closure to the character of Rocky Balboa. Forget him coming back in Creed. I haven't got a problem with Creed. I like the Creed movies and I like his role in them. But as a Rocky franchise goes, if that was where it completely ended for that character, I would be happy. It is a strong film in that series of movies and deserves that treatment 100%. Now, number four, and for the next three films, these films all feel intertwined in a sense. So number four, we're going to go to 1998 and the movie Armageddon. Yes, Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, Ben Affleck, you know the one, um, the movie that where where the oil drillers have to save the Earth from a massive asteroid. Now, this is this film is a visual treat to the senses the film looks fantastic it sounds fantastic it deserves that 4k treatment why hasn't this movie been given 4k treatment i know the answer and the answer is disney that's where the answer lies for that one as with the next two releases after that now number number five is 1997 Con Air. Yes, the Nicolas Cage action fest. Now, again, this is a classic action movie from the 90s. It's a wonderful action movie from the 90s. It is, a, a, a again, another visual masterpiece treat of a movie that deserves that. Just that little bit of special touch and a nice release to finish it off. But again, Disney. And Disney again for 1996 season. This is number five. Sorry, it's number six on the list. The Rock. Yes, Nicolas Cage again with Sean Connery and Ed Harris. Again, a, a masterclass of action and tension from the mid-90s. A film that, honestly, Michael Bay, I love. I love from Michael Bay. It's a fantastic movie. Um, I don't get it. These films are all deserving. Now, jump to number seven, and probably not a film deserving in most people's eyes, and that is 1995's Judge Dredd, Sylvester Stallone's Judge Dredd. Again, now this film, I know it upset a lot of people. It has a big cult following now. It does indeed. And forget the story, forget what they've done with Judge Dredd. This is a visually impressive movie. It's got a lot of fantastic special effects works in it, both digital and um, in camera, you know, the robot, the, the um, I forget what they call it now, the ABC Warrior robot. Um, this film is also, a lot of it is very dark, so it would, you know, be, you know, it, 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 it would benefit from those deeper, richer blacks, but it's also a very colourful movie at the same time, and it would just pop on the screen. Um, now jump to number nine to 1990 for number eight, and it's Robocop 2. Yes, the second Robocop movie. Obviously, Robocop 1 was given, the first Robocop was given the 4K treatment. I wasn't a fan of the 4K treatment of that movie. Um, I felt that it kind of detracted from the movie in that it, it looks better as a um, a grounded film, a, a, a rougher looking movie. But Robocop 2 is a film that I would like to be seen given a decent transfer, um, cleaning up, get rid of the, I think it would benefit it to get rid of the grain structure in the movie and this sort of a thing. Um, where it didn't work for me on Robocop 1, I think it certainly would on Robocop 2. And you've done it with that first film, why not do it again with this movie? Then we jump to number nine and back to 1978 and from the catalogue of John Carpenter. Assault on Precinct 13. Now, the original one, not the remake. This is a very dark film. Um, dark in tone and dark in, in um, visuals and nature. And again, it would benefit from that, that 4K crisp clarity with the deep, dark, rich blacks. Um, it worked on the other stuff that John Carpenter, like The Thing, was given a 4K. It looks fantastic. And if you could do that to this movie, I'd be very happy. Now, number 10, we're going to jump to 1991. And this is Kevin Costner's epic Dances with Wolves. The film speaks for itself. It's got some fantastic visual um, 
you know, scenery in it, the way it's been shot, where it's been shot, and a 4K transfer would only enhance the visual richness of this movie. Um, it's just a no-brainer to put Dances with Wolves onto 4K. I think the film would just look fantastic, fabulous, and give a new depth to, to you know, just where it's set. It, it would look oh, blinding. Um, now, another Stallone one from 1996, and number 11 on my list, and this would be Daylight. Yes, the, the you know, Stallone stuck in the tunnel when the explosion's gone off and water's pouring in, this sort of thing. A lot of these these movies, these disaster movies like Poseidon, etc., things like that, you know, these are films that are, again, visually rich, a lot of special effects go into play, and they would only be benefited from giving this treatment, most certainly. And, yeah, Daylight would be one that I would really enjoy seeing on 4K. Um, and then we jump to 1982 for number 12 and Conan the Barbarian. The first Conan film from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Where's that on 4K? We were given Red Sonja. Red Sonja was given the 4K treatment. So it goes without saying, doesn't it? It's like these are one of those ones that I question that, you know, you spent time restoring this movie, Red Sonja. But we ain't got Conan. Why haven't we got Conan? Um, so that kind of is a no-brainer. It kind of speaks for itself by the fact that we've got, we've got Red Sonja. And then number 13, and, you know, being October, being Halloween, being number 13, I can't not venture into the territory of horror. Okay? So for you all your horror nuts out there, 1984, Wes Craven, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Do I need to say any more that this is a film that should be given a 4K treatment? I have heard murmurings that it may be getting it or something, but most definitely the 4K um, the catalogue is lacking from that title, as it is from many titles in this list. And I'm sure that a lot of you will agree on a lot of them on this list and why they haven't been given such treatments yet and why we haven't got them. Um, but there we go. So I've given you 13 movies, 13 movies that I would like to see given a 4K release. Why don't you let me know down in the comments below films that you would like to see given the 4K treatment. And stay out of the territory of those that we know Aliens, The Abyss, um, a Terminator, etc., etc. Give me some others. Some, like, dig into your minds. Films that you would really like to see, given the 4K treatment. Let me know. Let's talk about it. See you soon. Goodbye.